Welcome back, plebs. I'm glad to say that we'll finally talk about the Res Publica. More specifically, of the two great heroes of the early Republic. You know, just in case you need proof that the great man history is correct. <coughs> John Green. <coughs> it was 509 BC, and a map of the world looked like this. Then we have the Mediterranean, and then Italy. At the heart of Latium, we have Rome. Now the Res Publica. Okay, okay, the Republic. The center of the civilized, and now democratic, world. The further away you got from it, the shitter you got. Should be intuitive by now. I could go on and on over how the Republic worked. It's a work of art. But here's a summary. The man voted, woman, kids, immigrants and slaves didn't, a man, the the richer you were, the stronger your vote. The Crucis Honorum went from quaestors, aediles, praetors, and consuls. Censors also existed, tribunes as well, and the Pontifex Maximus had the best name. Historia Civil discovers it all. Here we will focus not on the offices, but the enemies of the Republic. They fit into two groups. In more times, they were the barbarians. Ancient enemies of civilization, rape, kill, destroy, we know them well by now. In peacetime, however, they were the plebs, Rome's lazy masses, always bitching at the patricians for the pettiest of reasons. It wasn't enough that Publius and the others had freedom from the Tarquins. Barely a decade later, they were already committing mass treason, fucking off to the sacred mountain refusing to enlist for Rome's defense. To appease those traitors, the patricians began to gradually grant the plebs more and more of a political voice. It would eventually destroy the Republic, but hey, what did you expect with plebs in charge? Despite these concessions, the plebs just kept bitching for more and more, neither satisfied or grateful. A patrician named Caso had just about enough of it. As a descendant of the Albans Tullus had brought into Rome from Albalonga, Caso actively participated in not letting yet another city be ruined. His actions triggered the revolt in the Capitoline Hill, which killed the consul of the year, Publicola, that is Publicola's son. Such was the regard plebs held for Roman history. Heroes. In his place, the Senate elected Caso's father as Sufet Consul, Lucius Quintus Cincinnatus. I could go on forever about this man, but his story speaks for itself. As Consul, Cincinnatus refused to give a single inch to the plebeian demands, ending his consulship and retiring to his small farm. The plebs, of course, refused to shut their mouths, abusing their newly acquired political powers to falsely frame Caso with murder charges, who maxed out himself out of pure disgust. A common practice, as we'll see. And so the plebs went after his father, fining Cincinnatus for all the money he had, forcing him to live in a tiny little patch of dirt, which he did with no complaints. Meanwhile, the barbarous Aquae tried to retake Tusculum from Rome, encircling the small consular army sent to fight them. In such times of need, the Senate would temporarily elect dictators to solve the crisis. Elected as such, Cincinnatus accepted his duty, bore his toga, kissed his wife, went to Rome, drafted the plebs, crushed Rome's enemies, renounced the dictatorship and went back to his farm, all in two weeks. Pretty based, if I might say, but it doesn't end there. Decades later, a wannabe tyrant began bribing the plebs for support in his claim to be king, also a common practice which we will definitely see more of. To stop him, the Senate elected Cincinnatus dictator, again, now 80 fucking years old. He accepted, bore his toga, kissed his wife, went to Rome, drafted the plebs, crushed Rome's enemies, renouncing the dictatorship and went back to his farm. But this time it took three weeks. He wasn't in his prime anymore. Few Roman heroes can compare to Cincinnatus in virtue, one of which happened to be born just a few decades later. With yet another pleb revolt crushed, the patricians could resume Rome's mission of spreading civilization, starting with Vei, long since a Roman enemy. To crush them once and for all, command of the Roman legions was granted to the greatest Roman general of the time, Marcus Furius Camillus. Now that that's a clan name right there. Leading the war effort, Camillus defeated all of Vei's allies, laying siege to the city for years, breaching it and annihilating the population. Such is a fate reserved for Rome's rivals. It's fitting, then, that the victorious Roman soldiers received their first salary that day, Vei Delendaist. Rome was now the undisputed leader of Latium, having subdued the entire Latin League years back, but defeating Vei posed the question of what to do with the land and loot. Camillus refused to let the plebs take the hard-won earnings, much less allow them to infest Vei. Instead, he gifted much of the treasures and lands distributed to the gods. A wise choice, not that religious duty was something that plebs respected, once more abusing their power to lay false charges on Camillus, forcing him into exile. In their rage, the gods sought to punish the plebs. Enter the Gauls, easily one of the most vile barbarian hordes, topped only by one. Having destroyed all of Central Europe, they began to invade Etruscan-held Italy, a bastion of civilization compared to them. <laughs> yeah. They raised their way down south, until the leader of the Senone tribe, Brennus, came in contact with Roman ambassadors. They asked him why he was destroying everything, only to accuse the Romans of doing the same. They explained that what they really did was to spread civilization which triggered Brennus beyond belief, declaring war on them on the spot. The Senate saw this as a chance to finally teach the plebs to fight on their own. The pleb legions met with the Gauls in battle, and broke in seconds, fleeing to Vei figures. With no army on the field, the patricians could only sigh as Gaul invaded the city, killing, raping, and burning everything on sight. Sounds familiar? It's hard to say who I blame most for this. Thankfully, the core of the city held firm, being manned by the patrician soldiers who stayed behind. Still in exile, Camillus was furious when he learned of the invasion, accepting the election as dictator and raising a new army. Meanwhile, unable to fully take the city, Brennus was met with the senators, demanding them to pay him to leave, so that he could have an excuse to claim victory. But when a senator pointed out that the gold balance was rigged, Brennus laughed, saying, why wick this? Meaning, gives me that. It was then that Camillus arrived, his mere presence making the Gauls shit themselves. Once explained the situation, Camillus laughed, pulling out his massive dick, breaking the scale, and telling the barbarians to fuck off back to their mud huts. Brennus couldn't hold his greed anymore, trying to take the gold and run away, only to hear behind him. <laughs>
No one knows exactly what happened to the Gauls that day, only that they were all gone. It was a victory, but a costly one. The plebs wished to migrate to Vei, but Camillus shunned their laziness. The gods had appointed them with a divine mission, and in Rome was where it was to be undertaken. Personally leading the reconstruction effort, Camillus ensured Rome would not share in Troy's fate, becoming its second founder and a hero forever. Alright, who's keeping tabs? I think Camillus has the new record. Stick around to see how long it lasts. But of course, the his stars in the audience already know how long it lasts. The next chapter will be all about the Latin and Semite Wars, together with the BTFOing of a certain Greek king. I might change topics, no idea really, so let me know what you think and want. Farewell plebs, and ciao ciao!